Okay, welcome to uh, my studio, Emily's studio. <laughs> I'm Emily Taylor from Collage Quilter. I am super excited to announce today that I have a new summertime project. So if you are looking for just something that's really, really simple and fun, I whipped up this little fruit salad behind me. I'm calling this Sweet Summer. It's gonna be, it's a table topper. I've already even quilted it and I'm just gonna put the binding on today. And this is, Amelia, have we made it available to pre-order? Okay, so it'll be available uh, today to pre-order. Mm -hmm. No, we'll just, I'll get the pattern written and we'll just make it, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's gonna be, <laughs> we're gonna make it available today on uh, collagequilter.com. So included in this pattern will be the directions for each of the watermelons, the triangular slices and the half slices. And we've got grapes and pears and strawberries and peaches and cherries. So um, there's a lot going on in this cute little thing and it really comes together super fast. Now, the nice thing about doing this um collage is that you don't have to do as many fruits as i've done uh you could just do one or two i don't care we'll just give you lots of options but i am super excited to to share this with you because i think it turned out really good so i think what we're gonna do is in a week or two have a tea party a summer tea party and i want you to grab your refreshing summer drink and join me and i'm going to make each of these fruits for you so you can watch as I demonstrate. So that will be coming up. Um, that will be a fun, a fun time together. So uh, yeah, Dale, I want to do placemats. So um, I think that's probably what I'll, when I'm demonstrating, I will just do one of each fruit which let's see, let's count again. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if I count both of the watermelons. So I, I'll do seven or eight fruits, seven fruits in there. I will um, demonstrate each of them and uh, I'm gonna turn those into placemats. And I won't, you know, they'll probably just be in the corner or something of my placemat. The other thing I'm going to do is because this is a table topper and I want to use it, I am going to wash it. So I, we get lots of questions all the time. Can you use collage quilts? Can I wash it? And um, I'm going to wash it so that you see how it works out. Okay. Um, great to see you guys. So let me pull it a little closer and I'll just kind of give you some close up information about what I've done. Oh. Get up here. Did you make it clear that this is parchment pressing and people can make it in any, like they can do a still life, they can do their own? It yeah. doesn't have to be this. No, but I am going to make that clear right now. Amelia made a good point. She said, make sure the people understand that this is done using my parchment pressing technique so that you can do just one or as many as you want. You can create your own arrangement. Um, so it gives you, you have all the options in the world. I'm just gonna teach you how to do each fruit and then you can do whatever you want with it. You can make a little wall hanging, you can do placemats, you can do the table topper like I've done. Um, and then I just wanna also, you can kind of see the quilting on here. It's just the vertical lines. I'm getting better and better with my little ruler and I like this and I didn't even change the thread. I just used the what is it that I like that really fine thread, the uh, micro quilter, superior micro quilter thread. And I just used white. So um, anyway, yeah, I really like it. I'm super happy about it. And I host my family for the 4th of July. And I think that's going to be, it will be a really fun thing to have out at my table. Um, I'm also going to go find some other fun things to share with you. Uh, we made it to um, Ikea last week and they've got cute straws and cute water pitchers for super dirt, dirt cheap. So when we have our little um, tea party and I share all this information with you, 
I will probably have some recipes for you too to make fruit slush for your um, holiday parties if you're having one on the 4th of July. So um, anyway, there you have it. That's what I've been working on. And um, this has been really fun for me. So let's kind of focus on now if you have any questions. Um, let, let me go through and just see if we have any questions from any of you here. Um, I also will tell you I've been, hello from Kiwi Lizzie. I'm not sure, <laughs> Kiwi. hello, what is Ki Kiwi Lizzie? Her name is Elizabeth, she probably goes by Lizzie and she's probably from Got New Zealand it. or Australia. <laughs> so Elizabeth, are you from Australia <laughs> or New Zealand? Auckland, New Zealand, great. Great to have you here. Okay, let me scroll down here. Millie, do you see any other questions? <laughs> Karen said, I'd be too afraid someone will spill something on it. Well, here's the thing. I, you know, I'm not gonna use it a ton. And I think it's one of those statement pieces that will just, it's just so cheerful and fun. And I, you know, sometimes it's just so fun to pull out your best stuff and lay it out. And placemats, they're, or, um, you know, a nice, nice placemats or a nice um, uh, tablecloth can be kind of expensive and it takes some effort to make a beautiful table. But I always want to be that. I want to be Martha Stewart when people come to my house. I want them to look at it and be like, oh, my gosh, that's so beautiful. So I don't really care if it gets stained. I'll clean it up best I can, but I am going to use it because I just I just really want to play Martha Stewart. <laughs> I want it. I want to have something beautiful. Um, so anyway, that's that. Uh, Marie from Butte, Montana. Hello from Belgium and the Netherlands. Oh, I love it. Great to have you all here. So we need to get back to, um, oh, Mary, that's a brilliant idea. I could just put a clear plastic table cover over it. Okay, great idea. So I think even a piece of glass over it, if I were to have a piece of glass cut to fit it, would be a gr make a beautiful table topper, right? Um, so I love that idea. I, I will look into that a little bit more. And I'm going to share with you everything that I do. I want you to see pictures of it and what I buy. I've got, like I said, watermelon straws, and we're going to make a watermelon slush. And um, so anyway, that's going to be fun. <laughs> Someone said, I'm better than Martha Stewart. Oh, I wish. She's just got such good taste, right? Like she makes things beautiful. She loves to entertain. She does a beautiful job. So that's kind of what I mean. I want to be, I want to make a beautiful, I want to make it beautiful for my guests. Um, I could laminate it. I might consider that as well. I like the idea of a glass tabletop though. That would kind of make it, you know, glass is just, it's just kind of elegant, pretty. I mean, you know, so that would definitely protect it. So I think that's a great idea. Um, okay. Amelia, what else do we need to talk about with summertime coming up and projects. I've been teaching a lot. So we, I think um, I, a couple days ago was teaching again, how to do the Clementine tree. And I want to share with you. Um, I get asked a lot. What is my favorite? What's a good beginning project? May we go grab the Clementine. I'm going to share this again, because this is another, another summertime cheerful project. Um, and I just want to remind you that this is, this is a wonderful beginner project. So here's the Clementine. And let me just tell you, let me just remind you what makes something kind of a beginner project and why I love this so much. Um, there are, for a beginner project, I really try to distill down and pull out just three values that I'm going to work with. And so you by three values, I mean, I've got one, 
is this the dark green. Um, two is the mid-tone green. And then three is the light green. So having just three values makes it super, super simple. You can also see the, re the repetition of three values in the Clementines. You know, one is the mid-tone, two is the highlight, and three is the shadow. Um, the other thing that I love about this is that it has complementary a complementary color scheme. So the orange and the blue are complementary colors and it's just a really pleasing color palette to our eye. So if you're looking for a great beginner project, this is a great one. This is available as a download or a pre-printed foundation panel. Um, now, as far as the fruit, they also are, these fruit pieces are also what I would call beginner level because we're only dealing with three values that we have to worry about. So I'll talk to you more, but I'll teach you more about that. I'm going to do a, a webinar where I'll make each of these little elements and we'll talk about selecting fabric and how to think about using your fabric in a collage like this. So it's a pretty sophisticated looking I mean, the end result is pretty sophisticated looking, but it's very easy to um, to execute. And I, so I hope you'll join me. Anyway, so we'll, I'll send out more details about that. We're just finishing up getting the pattern written and scheduling the Zoom webinar. So I will send out details and be announcing that in my Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. And I'll put it in a Collage Quilter Facebook group and uh, I'll send out an email as well. So if you're not on my email, um, I invite you to join my email newsletter. You can sign up for it at collagequilter.com. You can also receive a free pattern when you do so if you haven't already done that. Um, if you go to collagequilter.com, scroll to the bottom, you'll see a link for free pattern. Then you can register for my email list and you'll get the free pattern. And then you'll be notified. I don't send out a ton of emails. I send emails out when I have something to talk about. Uh, but so this will be announced. This will be up later today for sale. And as will the webinar. Now the webinars generally sell out. So because there are limited seats in the webinar. So if you're very interested in watching me demonstrate how to make this, I'd love to have you join me, but just be aware that they'll sell out. So I do highly recommend that you're on my email list so you can be notified right away when seats open up to, to join me. So that's that. And <laughs> Elle just said, holy sh... <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, oh, Maria just said, okay, so here's some, here's, we always get good comments and, and suggestions in the group. So uh, let's just take a look at some of those because the, so Marie just said Scotch Guard. She uses Scotch Guard, um, is what she uses on her placemat. So great idea. Thank you so much, Marie. I actually have some of that downstairs. So I'll bring that, I'll show you that product and we'll talk about how to protect your, uh, whatever you want to use, because we are putting some effort into our collage works and um, we want them to stay nice and lovely, but we also do want that extra little oomph for our guests. We want to surprise them and we want them to say, holy, when they <laughs> walk in and see our tables laid out, right? Um, okay, so just to remind you, we've got a few people who just hopped on the water. Yes, this is a pattern that I will be releasing today, a collage quilter, and also today we will be um, opening up the webinar. Again, there are limited seats in the webinar, but the webinar will include a discussion about fabric selection and then I'll demonstrate how to make each of these fruits. So it will be fun and I want you to grab your frosty delicious beverage and I will provide some I will provide some drink recipes for you as well. Um, okay, let's see. Is there anything else that we want to Oh, Elizabeth said so Elizabeth said, 
um, Kiwis are from New Zealand. That's the land of my birth. So that's why she goes by, was it Liz Kiwi or something like that? So, um, okay, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Um, I'm just looking through the comments to make sure I've uh, looked at them. It doesn't, if you have questions for me, this is always a really great, great place for questions. So if you want to see something, if you want me to show you something or talk about something in particular, joining me on this live webinar or this live stream is a great idea. So Elle just asked a question. I'm going to answer that. Do you cut each piece? when putting it together. Um, L, if I don't answer this correctly, just rephrase it, but I just, I wanna make sure I get that. So um, the, the method for making these for each piece of fruit, I make each piece of fruit separately on a piece of parchment paper. And um, I press them, when I'm all finished applying all the collage pieces, I press it and then it that allows me to peel it off in one piece so that it's kind of like a sticker. So before I, ha so I had, I did each of these pieces independently and then I left them on the parchment paper. In fact, I kind of trimmed the parchment paper so that I could see what they look like. So I trimmed the parchment paper real close to the collage, but I left them all on the parchment paper until I figured out the composition that I wanted to do. And I try, you know, I'm, I messed around with it and tried a few different compositions. And this was the final composition. So then I peel each piece off each. When I say I peel each piece off, this entire unit comes off as one unit. And same thing with the grapes. So I'll just peel them off and I, I then um, apply them. So we'll talk about that in the webinar, how to how to do this. And um, so there you go. It, let's see if there are any other questions. Do you actually machine quilt the overall piece after the entire design is complete? Yes, um, Vivian. So I finished this a few days ago and I just, uh, then I, so what I did is I, I pieced this top together. So this obviously is in the middle. I pieced the, the white pieces and then I applied the collage elements around it. Then when that whole thing was done, I ironed it, pressed it really super good, steamy, steamy, steamy iron. And then I created a quilt sandwich. So the back of my quilt looks like this. I've got uh, the Hobbs 8020 batting in between it and I put it on my long arm machine and used a ruler and the quilting follows the diagonal on uh, in the center and then it's just you can see it's just straight lines all the way around so straight lines here and then all the way through i didn't even change my thread so it was really super easy to quilt through and i can't believe what a here's the other thing about quilting a lot of times People are like, oh, I don't want to do too many layers. And I don't either. I don't want to do too many layers. But you will see that there are some areas where I have pieces that are overlapping one of the other pieces, which means, so if I look at this area right here, for instance, this little cherry leaf overlaps the watermelon. And in this piece, there is one, two, three, four, five. So there's, you know, two or three pieces of overlap there. And then it's overlapping two or three pieces here. So we've got a thicker overlap right there for sure. Um, but I was surprised at really how simple, how easy it was to quilt. Um, I will share with you the needle size that I've used and all about the thread and quilting and whatnot in the webinar. So, um, and today I'm just gonna get the binding on. I think I'll use, I think I'll use the same fabric to bind it. So you'll see finished pictures as I post them in the Facebook groups and on the um, Instagram. I'll post them on Instagram and on my Facebook page. So let me double check and make sure there aren't any other. So L just said, uh, <coughs> do you cut each piece when putting it together or is it just scraps as is? 
I'm not sure I understand, L. So she's wondering if they're just random scraps or if you have a piece and you cut from that and make specific shapes. Okay, uh, Amelia helped me maybe kind of understand her question. So the shape of each piece is pretty random. Um, you can see it, as you look at it closely, the, there's no specific design per each piece. Um, every piece is freehand cut and where I do need to do a rounded edge, I'll just make sure it's kind of a rounded thing and then I'll audition, make sure the shape works and then I'll peel the paper off and adhere it. So let's see. So does I think that an should answer your question. Each piece in the watermelon, it's not fussy cut. Um, I just, they're just random shapes and then I overlap them and I just make them fit in the design. Okay, so uh, Janet asked, do you quilt your table topper or leave it as the one layer? I just addressed that. So yes, this is quilted. It's quilted just like a normal quilt with the, with the uh, quilt top being the collage and then this is the background and there is some um, uh, batting in the quilt sandwich. Okay, let's see, is there anything else? Ellen, what kind of needle do you use? I will, Amelia, will you go, if you'll go grab, well, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Um, I'll answer all of these questions in the webinar for sure, but will you, okay, yeah, I'm going to hold this up close so you all can see it. Somebody just asked, so sorry, let me, over there in our stuff is the storage stuff that I have for my long arm quilt machine. Bring that over. It's got my needles and I'll tell everybody what needle I used. Um, this is, I just had some people who I was teaching this class, um, over the weekend and mentioned that this is probably my favorite beginner pattern. Um, and it's a foundation panel. This is Clementine. And so that's, what's in my lap. And yes, I will show this up close, but I also want to share my needles with you because there's nothing special. But they are, I will tell you what one I've used. Okay. I don't even know how to read what size they are. I think it's called a 16. So that is my needle. It just came with my baby lock coronet long arm machine. I haven't tried different needles, and but I haven't had any problem whatsoever with this. So it's the number 100 over 16. Somebody can help me. I am not a, lo a good long arm quilter. I'm not a good person to ask, but I do know that that needle combined with the thread that I've used worked really great for this. So um, someone just asked where and when is the webinar? The webinar for this, we don't have signups available yet, but I will announce that when it's available, it'll be later today. Uh, I am planning on doing it June 30th and we may do multiples because there are limited seats in the webinar. So if we have a lot of people that would like to participate, we'll open up another one. Um, oh, let's show you up close so you can see these pieces up close. Okay, so I think it's really, really helpful to see up close. There's a strawberry. It gives you a good idea of the variety of fabric that I use and the shapes of the pieces. Okay, I hope that is helpful. This is my least favorite strawberry right there. But, you know, I just had to use it because... So there you go. There's kind of the there's kind of the close up. Um, Kim just asked. Kim just asked what color thread did you quilt? I used white thread, 
And because it's the micro quilter thread, you can barely see it. I didn't change the, the thread color at all, but you can barely see the white thread. Plus there's so much white in this design that I just felt like that, uh, it, it worked really well, it blends in really well. Um, someone just asked, will there be an evening webinar or a weekend webinar? Uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of both. Right now I've got it scheduled for a weekday in the morning. That might be difficult for a lot of people, but when you do sign up or register for a webinar, um, I will always make the replay available if you're not able to make the live event. So let's put this back up here. Okay. Oh, it's so cute. It just makes me happy to look at it. Um, someone just asked, do you do any quilting around any of the pieces? No, I haven't done quilting around any of the pieces. I've, the only quilting that I've done is the vertical quilting through it. And the stitch lines are one half inch apart because I, I would go denser, but I wouldn't go any further apart. A half inch is as far apart as I'll do. Um, and yes, I did uh, use a ruler for the quilting. Elle said, why can't I see any stitch lines on the fruit? I think it's just because the, the thread blends in. It's very, very fine. It's a hundred pound thread. And that is why you can't see the stitch lines. That's why I chose it. Um, and yes, it, all of these pieces are, uh, they are adhered to the foundation background because I've used um, double-sided fusible web. The uh, light steam seam two is my preference. Oh, the size of this is, Amelia, what did I tell you the size is? 30 by 38. So it's 30 inches across by 38 inches long. And again, the size is completely up to you because I've used the parchment pressing method. And so you can do a much smaller version. You could do a thin table runner. It's entirely up to you how you want to create it. Uh, let's see if there are any other questions. Okay, it looks like I've answered most of the questions. Um, Ellen said the needle are a little bit sticky. I'm assuming she's asking. So um, I do change my needle often because I want to have a really, really sharp needle and I oil my I oil my machine between each use. I change the the needle. And I had just a really, really minimal amount of adhesive kind of gum up the needle a little bit. And I could just scratch it off with my thumbnail. So, um, I think that, I hope that answers your question, Ellen. Let me just double check. Okay. All right, I think I've answered questions. And um, I want to remind you that if you have additional questions, you can always email me, emily at collagequilter.com, or you can just find me next week here, same time, same place, um, 11 o'clock, Mountain Daylight Time. That's when I do my live. You can find me on YouTube and Facebook and my website, it's all collage quilter. Find me on Instagram, collage.quilter. So I'm easy to find. I want you to have success with your projects and I'm happy to teach you and share all of what I am learning as I go through this fun process of learning to be a collage quilter. So thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. And I will hopefully see you next week and maybe in the interim. Okay, goodbye.